And uh, let me introduce to you uh, Professor Zeki Sarutoprak. Uh, he's from John Carroll University uh, and uh, Professor and Bedir Zaman Said Nursi Chair. Microphone? So I'll uh, show a little bit more. Yes. And Zeki Sarutoprak is a Professor and Bedir Zaman Said Nursi Chair in Islamic Studies at John Carroll University. He holds a PhD in Islamic theology from the University of Marmara in Turkey. Professor Saratoprak is the author of Islam's Jesus, University Press of Florida in 2014, and over 30 academic articles and encyclopedia entries on topics in Islam. He has served as guest editor for issues of the journals Islam, Christian Muslim Relations, and the Muslim World. He is editor and co-translator of Fundamentals of Rumi Thought, a Mevlevi Sufi perspective, and I heard him speak in, back in 2007 in, at UC Berkeley. It was a fantastic presentation. Thank you, Dr. Sarutoprak. And the editor of a critical edition of Al Saraksi Sifat Ashrat Al Sa in Arabic, Cairo, in 1993. He's currently preparing a book on Islamic spirituality, tentatively titled Islamic Spirituality, Theology and Practice for the Modern World. He extensively wrote in Islamic theology, in fit dialogue, and prominent Islamic scholars such as Said Nursi and Fethullah Gülen. For, uh, there's a kind of a website, if you're more interested, I can share you the website uh, that you can see the publications of Sarı Toprak. So please now help me welcome uh, Sarı Toprak. Thank you very much. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Uh, I will try to uh, cover my topic, Jesus in Islam, in about half an hour. I will be brief. Normally it takes about 45 to 50 minutes, but I will be brief. Um, and then I will have your questions. So I will give more time for your questions. Now, we talked about um, uh, Islam's Jesus, or Jesus in Islam. Uh, traditionally, I have, before you ask me questions, I ask you some questions. So one question is, this question is for Muslims in the, among the audience. Is there a chapter in the Quran named after Jesus? I said for the Muslims, but all can respond also. There is one? Some, some say no, some say there is one. Let's see. Yeah. In the meantime, can, can everybody hear? Maybe you, would you like to come over here? There is a chapter about the mother of Jesus. Yeah, there is a chapter named after, Je after Mary. But you say there is no chapter named after Jesus? There is one. I know there is one. Yes, yes. Family of Imran. There is a chapter called the Family of Imran. Uh, well, there is uh, a chapter named after Jesus in the Quran. But actually, if you look at the table of contents, you will not see that name because uh, traditionally Quranic chapters sometimes uh, can have more than one name. So, for example, uh, chapter 61 uh, of the Quran has three names. One is the current one that we know it is in the table of contents of the Quran. Um, it is in the, the list of the chapters uh, called uh, Al Saf, which means the row of angels. It speaks of angels in that chapter. Uh, another name for the same chapter is called Al Hawariyun. Another name is Al Hawariyun, which means the disciples the disciples of Jesus. And another name for the same chapter is Isa, which means Jesus. So there is a chapter in the Quran actually named after Jesus. Um, do Muslims believe in the second coming of Jesus? Yes. Uh, do we have an agreement? Can we say there is an agreement on this? There is an agreement. It sounds like there is an agreement. Uh, what is the most uh, frequently used title for Jesus in the Quran? Prophet. Prophet. What else? 
You say Ibn Maryam. Bravo, yes. Ibn Maryam. Ibn Maryam yeah, is the most uh, frequently used title. Ibn Maryam means, means the son of Mary. Uh, the son of Mary is similar to the biblical term uh, the son of man. Because in, in the gospel also Jesus is referred as the son of man. Uh, the, in the Quran, uh, the title is the son of Mary. And as you know, man, the, two, the word man originally didn't have a, a gender to, uh, um, specification. Man could be for women and men uh, as well. So these were questions. Um, Jesus was born from the Virgin Mary. Uh, basically, uh, it is a Quranic principle, and this is mentioned in chapter uh, named after Mary. Um, the birth of Jesus was a miracle. Mary was not touched by a human being, any human being. Um, in fact, we have some uh, references uh, about this when Mary became pregnant as a result of divine, let's say, command. Divine command. Angels appeared to Mary and they say, here is a good news for you. Uh, you, uh, you will be pregnant and you will give birth to a pure child whose name will be Isa, Jesus. And Mary says, how can I, how can I become pregnant uh, uh, without being touched by any human being? Um, uh, and then Angel says, this is the command of God. When God wants something, it just God says be and it happens. God's, God doesn't need to intervene physically. Just God commands and it happens. When God says be, kun in Arabic, kun, everything is, is easy for God. Uh, so the angel responds to Mary and says, this is God, God's command and when God says be, it will happen. Don't worry. Uh, with this regard, Christianity and Islam are the only two religions that in agreement about the miracle birth of Jesus. Uh, like Christianity, Islam also says Jesus, Jesus' birth, birth was a miracle. Uh, we have story. It is generally, the Quran is concise, but with this regard, uh, it gives details. How Mary became pregnant, and then how she brought uh, her child to her community, and how her community uh, accused her of committing adultery. And then, well, when Mary brought this new baby, they said, where did you get this baby? You were not married, and now you have a baby. And she, she was inspired by God, revealed to her that when they ask you this question, remain silent. Don't answer. Remain silent. And Mary did not respond. Instead, the Quran says, فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ Pointed at the baby. She, as if she said, don't ask me, ask the baby. Uh, and then they said, uh, how can we talk to someone who is in, the, in, in his cradle? Cradle, you know, like two, three days old. Uh, at the moment, Jesus uh, uh, spoke. And he said, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of God. Ataniel Kitab, he will give me the book, which is the gospel. Wajalani Nabiya, and he will make me a prophet. In, in Arabic, sometimes past tense and then future tense can be used in the Quranic language, referring to, to the future, but using past tense to indicate the. Um, the certainty of the event that this will happen. Wajalani Mubarakan, Ainama Kuntu, and God made me blessed whenever I am. Uh, God um, advised me of prayer, wa ausani bi salat, advised me of charity, uh, zakat, as long as I live. Uh, advised me to be kind to my mother. 
وَبَرًا بِوَالِدَتِي And then, peace be upon me uh, when I was born and when I die and when I am resurrected. This is Isa ibn Maryam. This is the story of Jesus, the son of Mary, Kaulul Haq, a true word of God. Um, so the, the verse is detailing the, the story of Jesus. We will not get into those details. So another aspect of Jesus, he is a bringer of justice. In the Quranic language, he will bring justice. Uh, well, we have references, I will talk about that. He is one of the five elite prophets of God. The highest of all prophets. Um, Jesus is one of them. Uh, as you know, um, uh, in Islam, we have, five, uh, we have six articles of faith. One of them is to believe in the prophets of God. And among there are many prophets of God. Uh, one hadith of the prophet says, one saying of the prophet says that there had been 124,000 prophets before Islam, before the prophet of Islam, prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon them. Only among these 124,000, five of them are the greatest are the highest. They are known as Ulul Azam, uh, the possessors of the steadfastness, the possessors of steadfastness. Um, these are Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon them all. So these are the highest of all humanity. If I say, look at the history of humanity, how many years have been passed, uh, how many people uh, have have passed among all these five personalities are the highest and that's why we can call them the stars of humanity like the sons of humanity in the Islamic theological language we can use you know this term actually he is a Muslim in the Quranic language Jesus is a Muslim with you realize I underline it as with lowercase m, um, because he submitted himself to the will of God. So in Islam, anyone, before Islam or after Islam, who submitted himself or herself to the will of God is a Muslim. Uh, and Jesus was a Muslim. Uh, now I remember once I was giving a talk, I think it was in, in Canada, um, and a Muslim among the audience, there was a Muslim professor, he was a professor, um, and he said, uh, uh, Dr. Sari Toprak, I want Jesus to be Muslim with uppercase M, not lowercase M. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you know, Sometimes a lowercase m is more important than uppercase m, actually. Because uppercase m means, you know, you are Muslim within the framework of this Islamic tradition, started with the Prophet of Islam, and, you know, today we have a number of people, more than 1.7 uh, um, billion people around the world known as Muslims with uppercase m. But... Sometimes you may be Muslim with uppercase M, but you may not be Muslim with lowercase M. Because you may be Muslim and you may not be submitting yourself to the will of God, so you are actually not real Muslim in the sense of lowercase M. So I said that's why lowercase M is important. You know, don't, don't think it's not important. Uh, Jesus also is a miracle worker. Uh, we have many miracles. Uh, in the Quran relates to Jesus, miracles with regard to healing, uh, uh, etc., with regard to resurrecting um, uh, the dead person to life. Um, he is also an intercessor. Uh, in the afterlife, uh, God gives the power of intercession to his messengers, to Jesus, to uh, Abraham, Moses, Muhammad, other prophets of God. So Jesus will have 
uh, this uh, aspect as well. So Jesus will be able to ask God to um, forgive a sinner, for example. Well, sometimes uh, I use a modern term. I say it can be compared to modern-day letters of recommendation. Uh, you know, when, when uh, the person writes a letter of recommendation, it's up to the search committee to hire the person or not. But he writes this beautiful letter. So basically, it's up to God to, to accept uh, uh, their uh, request or not. But generally, because these messengers of God are the beloved of God, uh, eventually God accepts their request and God forgives uh, those sinners because they are interceding for those people. Uh, so basically in major uh, sources of Islam, uh, in, in the Quran and in the Hadith, um, in the book I, uh, I elaborated on Islamic literature, theological sources as well, but because of the interest of time, uh, I will just focus on these two aspects. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Hadith, when we say the Hadith, um, to give you a sense of it, Hadith is the sayings of the Prophet. All sayings of the Prophet are known as Hadith, and we have many of them. They are recorded, and we, now they are available. Many of them are even available online today. So, in the Quran, um, Jesus mentioned in more than 90 verses of the Quran, which uh, shows the importance of Jesus in, in Islam, actually. Because, because Quran is the word of God, uh, even a hint in the Quran is important. Even a hint. Uh, how about if you have a person who is mentioned more than 90 times? So it is very important if in the Islamic tradition. He is characterized by his message. His message is also important. And <coughs> excuse me, his message is the gospel, the, the, the Injil, which is the uh, Quranic term uh, for, for the message of Jesus, the gospel. Uh, for example, a verse in chapter 2, verse 87 says, we gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clear signs. Uh, this is kind of indicating the gospel. Gospel is a clear sign. Um, another translation of the same verse says, um, we brought unto Jesus, the son of Mary, all evidence of the truth. Again, the gospel is described as uh, evidence of the truth in the Quranic language. Some verses, um, surely this is a verse about um, a miracle of Jesus. I came to you with a sign from your Lord. I create from clay the likeness of a bird, then I breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by God's permission. I underlined the, this, the part which says God's permission. This is, a very, this is very important in Islamic theology. Uh, it is because of God's power Jesus was able to do this. It was not Jesus' own power. It was given by God to Jesus. This is true for other prophets of God as well. Uh, so this is about um, giving life to the form of a bird. And the bird would become a living creature after breathing into it. Uh, also the healing. Uh, the verse continues. I heal those born blind and the leper. I resurrect the dead by God's permission again. Jesus was able to resurrect the dead. This, we have similar miracles of the prophet of Islam as well. So all these miracles were happening as a result of the empowering of God. God would empower his prophets so that when they, uh, uh, when they spoke, 
they were they were speaking uh, on behalf of God, and God was uh, confirming their message by giving them these extraordinary events. Another verse, um, and I have come confirming that which was before me of the Torah, and to make lawful to you part of what was forbidden to you, and I have come to you with a proof from your Lord. Now, in this verse, we see that um, Jesus confirms the Torah, does not reject the Torah, instead confirms the Torah. In Islam, in fact, uh, uh, Torah is uh, divine revelation to Moses. Uh, like the Gospel, similarly, uh, like the Psalms, these are divine revelations similar to the Quran. As the Quran was divine revelation, the Torah was divine revelation revealed by God to Moses. Similarly, Psalms revealed by God to David. Uh, the Gospel revealed <coughs> by God to Jesus and the Quran revealed by God to Muhammad. These are mentioned in the Quran. Because they are in the Quran, Muslims have to believe in the uh, um, in these divine <coughs> scriptures as well. So Jesus confirms the Torah. Uh, the verse continues uh, and then it says, God is my Lord and your Lord. So worship only him. Jesus asks his followers, his uh, disciples, uh, his community to worship only God. So according to the Quranic uh, um, um, teaching, which is indicated in this verse, uh, only um, God can be worshipped. In fact, it is in the first chapter of the Quran that uh, says, uh, addressing God, we worship only to you. So in Islam, you cannot worship prophets, you cannot worship angels. You cannot worship any creature except God. It's only to God. Worship is only to be performed to God. Another verse, again, confirming the Torah and receiving a new message from God, the Gospel. So in this verse, Jesus is presented as someone who is in the footsteps of other prophets. So it's not like an isolated case. There had been uh, prophets before Jesus, Abraham, Noah, uh, Isaac, Ishmael, all these messengers of God, uh, David, uh, Solomon. They are all prophets of God, messengers of God. So Jesus was in their footsteps, the Quran says. And in their footsteps, we sent Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the Torah that had come before him, and we gave him the gospel, in which was guidance and light. And describing the gospel as uh, a book that has uh, uh, guidance and light. Confirmation of the Torah that had come before it. Again, Torah, a guidance and admonition for the pious. The Quran describes these divine messages that way. Another verse. Uh, here we see uh, Jesus is asking for help uh, when he uh, he felt that he will be denied by uh, his community. So Jesus said, "Who will be my helper in the way of God?" And uh, who are my helpers in God's cause, Jesus asks. The disciples said, we are your helpers in God's cause. In this verse, the Quran praises the disciples of Jesus. Now, um, I like to move to the, uh, one of the major aspects of Jesus in, in, in the Quran and in the Hadith, basically, this specifically in the Hadith. Uh, in fact, in the book, I have a large chapter on this section, on this part, uh, um, aspect of, of Jesus. So this is about the descent of Jesus. 
like uh, Christians, Muslims believe in the in the coming of Jesus, in the descent of Jesus. Uh, in Islamic theology, it's not called the second coming. Instead, it is called the descent. Nuzul, the Arabic word Nuzul, which indicates something coming from up, from from heaven to earth. Uh, there are three approaches. Uh, I categorize that way because there are many references on this, a huge literature. And people are waiting. You know, in the Muslim world, if you visit, let's say, streets of Cairo, you will see pamphlets. Nuzul Isa, alayhi salam. The, the descent of Jesus, peace, be, peace and blessings be upon him. He is coming. You know, you will see uh, uh, the, the, these pamphlets would have some sayings of the prophet compiled by some people, scholars maybe, and um, people are really buying uh, these, these pamphlets. Uh, well, generally, they are just recording the sayings of the prophet there without any interpretation. Uh, we have Christians as well, you know, if um, I, I remember I was um, visiting um, Washington, I was in Washington area, Washington DC in the year of 2000 and I was visiting White House area and I remember I, I, uh, at that time I saw uh, a man holding a sign around uh, uh, White House saying that uh, Mr. President, the sign was saying, Mr. President, it is the millennium. Jesus is coming, so wait for his coming. Um, so we have Muslims, we have Christians who are looking uh, um, and looking for the coming of Jesus. So that is that is the the issue that I elaborated uh, in the book, actually, in this section. And I have to say that I found more than one hundred. Uh, sources uh, on this uh, in the Islamic literature. Uh, Muslims have elaborated on, on this subject. Um, I divide it into three categories. The first uh, category, I call them the modernist approach. Uh, not all modernist scholars, but some modernist scholars denied the, the concept of the descent of Jesus. They said this is something um, Something comes as a result of uh, the influence of uh, Christians and, and Jews to the Islamic tradition. Uh, so they said there is no such a thing that Jesus will come. This is the modernist approach. I, I, I call it the modernist approach. Not all modernist scholars. Some modernist scholars, I will, I will mention, they accept it, but they have different understanding. Uh, the second approach is literalist approach. It is, um, they, they take it very literally. They take the sayings of the prophet very literally and they say, definitely prophet said this, the prophet of Islam said this, and Jesus will come. So how? Well, he will come from sky. We will see him. And I remember once I said, so you accept that when Jesus comes, from Sky, uh, CNN, ABC, or this television will have interviewed him, will be able to see him and have interviewed him. And he said, yes, that's what will happen. That's the way it will happen. Well, the leader's approach is, is really uh, very, um, I mean, just looking at the, the, the uh, um, literal aspect of the text. Um, they say God is powerful. He will bring Jesus bodily and spiritually to earth. God is powerful. Well, there is a verse in the Quran which says God is the most powerful. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. God is powerful over everything. Then when uh, I, I said, well, the way that God deals with humanity is different. There is wisdom there also. Well, that is, there will be interpretive approach. The interpretive approach accepts the descent of Jesus but not in a but not in a literal way they accept it in a different way so uh, they um, interpret 
uh, the descent as a symbolism of spirituality. Um, therefore, the spirituality of Jesus will overcome towards the end of time, this, this uh, um, understanding suggests. I will elaborate on the interpretive approach uh, um, soon. Uh, is, is it mentioned in the Quran, uh, the, the descent of Jesus? There are scholars generally who are studying this area, uh, commentators of the Quran, Muslim theologians, have found some hints in the Quran about this. Not direct reference. There is no direct reference generally, but there are some hints. So one of these is um, Jesus will speak to humanity from his cradle and in manhood. They say in manhood means when he uh, comes back, you know, after his descent. Another verse, uh, which is considered more direct reference, uh, surely Jesus is a sign for the hour. The hour means the final moment of human history. And Jesus' descent, Jesus is a sign of the hour, the Quran says. So the interpretation of this is that um, Jesus indicates when Jesus' descent happens, that means the hour is near. So it happens in this world, but it indicates the nearness of the final hour, the final moment of human history. Uh, some scholars, again, in the interpretation of this verse, uh, say that um, this is not referring to the descent of Jesus, but this is referring to the birth of Jesus. So the birth of Jesus in a such a miraculous way is the sign of the hour. The God who has created Jesus this way is able to bring the, uh, to bring, uh, the end of time as well. So it, they say it's a reference to the power of God. Uh, so we have different interpretation. Now hadith. Uh, how about the sayings of the prophet? Um, we have several, many hadith actually. I think more than 100 sayings of the prophet about this subject. But it, I will just limit myself to a few of them. This hadith says, By God Almighty, in whose hand my soul is, Jesus, the son of Mary, will soon descend among you Muslims as a just ruler. In this hadith, um, Jesus is presented as a just ruler. So he will be bringing justice. He is uh, the bringer of justice. And the prophet gives this as a good news to Muslims. So the descent of Jesus is not a negative thing in Islam. It's a positive. It's a, it's a good news that Jesus will come and will bring justice. Another hadith. Um, in the, it's very interesting. In this hadith, we have some descriptions of Jesus. The prophet saw Jesus in his dream. Uh, I remember once I asked one of my colleagues, um, uh, a Christian theologian, uh, and I said, do we have reference, uh, references in the Christian tradition about the feature of Jesus? And he said, no, actually, we don't have. And that's why you, ha you have different colors of Jesus. Uh, in this hadith, it's very interesting. We have specifics about the feature of Jesus. Uh, the hadith says, it has been shown to me while I was sleeping in my dream, while I was circumambulating the Kaaba, I saw a man of brown color, the best one can see among brown colored human beings. So the color of Jesus is brown in this hadith, not white that we see in not the, blonde. you know, in the, not blonde. Uh, his hair was so long that it fell between his shoulders. The hadith continues. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had long hair. Uh, among the best hairs one can see. He had combed his hair, and it was as if water was dripping from his head. 
and he was on the shoulders of two men circumambulating the Kaaba, the holy shrine. So Jesus was uh, circumambulating the holy shrine of Islam. Uh, I asked, who is this? They replied, this is Jesus, the son of Mary. The hadith uh, so describes uh, the, the beauty of Jesus, the cleanliness of Jesus in a very poetic way uh, as based on the dream of the prophet. Because these indications, you know, like dripping uh, of uh, water from his head, uh, indications of cleanliness. Jesus uh, is, a, is a clean, very clean. Um, the prophet again uh, speaks of the relationship of Jesus to the Islamic community. Surely Jesus, the Messiah, now in this hadith, Jesus is entitled as the Messiah, will find some people from among my community as his helpers. So, some people from the community of Islam will be helpers of Jesus, the Prophet says. And the hadith continues, who are like you or even better than you, addressing his own companions. These people will be like you or even better than you. And the narrator of the hadith says, the Prophet repeated this three times, who are like you or even better than you. God will not disgrace a community of which I am the beginning and Jesus the end. So the community of Islam is between two messengers of God. The first, the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, and this, the last one is uh, again another messenger of God, Jesus, and um, uh, since the Islamic community is between these two messengers of God, there will be no disgracing of the, the community of Islam. God will not disgrace this community. Uh, the Prophet gives this as a, again, a good news, uh, good tidings for Muslims. In the Sufi literature, we have also uh, references to Jesus. Uh, Rumi uh, spoke of Jesus uh, in his al Mathnawi, in his famous um, um, monumental work, um, the Mathnawi. Now, t because of the interest of time, um, I skip some of this. Uh, Jesus also is um, known as the prophet of love in the Islamic tradition. Uh, for Muslim mystics, Jesus' teaching of love is uh, frequently emphasized. And I have this quote from a prominent uh, Islamic scholar, Bediou Zaman Said Nursi, um, to love, love, and to hate, hatred. If you love, love, love will increase. If you hate, hatred, hatred will decrease. In fact, he says, there is nothing deserves hatred more than hatred. Hatred itself deserves hate, hatred, nothing more than that. Uh, this philosophy, this idea, um, is emphasized by Fethullah Gulen today, who is um, actively involved in dialogue. Nursi again has a beautiful statement about this. He says, our heart is so full of love that there is no space for hatred to enter. If it is full of love, there is no space for hatred anymore. Now, coming with this, I am coming to the interpretive approach that I mentioned three of them, uh, literalist, modernist, and interpretive. And I favor the interpretive approach, so I, I will elaborate on that. And in the book, actually, I elaborated further. The descent of Jesus, Muhammad Abdu has interpretation on this. Muhammad Abdu is a prominent uh, Muslim intellectual scholar. Uh, he, norm, normally he's known as a modernist. Uh, in this regard, he is, uh, um, he is 
approaching from an interpretive perspective. So he's not denying the descent of Jesus, but he is interpreting it. And therefore he says, um, the descent of Jesus and his ruling on earth, uh, as mentioned in the Islamic uh, sources, can be interpreted as the dominance of his spirit and his enigmatic message to people. This is what dominates Jesus' teaching of commanding mercy, love, and peace. If these three elements are fulfilled, according to Muhammad Abdu, the message of Jesus is fulfilled, actually. Love, and mercy, and peace. Uh, he goes further even. He says, um, the time of Jesus' descent is a time when people take the spirit of religion and the spirit of Islamic law to heart. Spirit of religion, not the appearance of religion, but the essence of it, the spirit of it. Um, to reform their inner life without sticking to the forms and appearances. Which is a problem today even in the Islamic world, to stick to the forms, appearances. The literal, the literal aspect of the law, and forgetting the essence of the law, the spirit of the law. Uh, a Turkish Islamic um, scholar, commentator of the Quran, has also, um, and I have actually um, an appendix in the book from this Islamic scholar, Muhammad Hamdi Yazir. Uh, he says, the word of Jesus did not have any other meaning than the word of Tawheed. Tawhid means the oneness of God. So Jesus means the oneness of God in his uh, understanding. The real spirit of the Torah and the gospel is solely this Tawhid. So according to uh, Muhammad uh, um, Hamdi Azar, um, the spirit of the Torah, the spirit of the gospel is nothing but the oneness of God. And well, that's why perhaps the Christian, uh, uh, Judaic, Islamic traditions are all known as monotheistic religious traditions. Uh, he says also Jesus is, is an unusual, Jesus is an unusual abstract word of God. Unusual is not like a regular word of God, but unusual word of God. It's because of his ability, why he is, the, that is to say, it's because of his ability to miraculously resurrect the dead, a blessing from God that is mostly denied by people of the time. So he, um, he is able to resurrect the dead because he is an unusual abstract word of God. And in, in the book I have details of that actually. Coming to the interpretive approach of Bediou Zaman Said Nursi, um, this is, I think, a very important approach because uh, Nursi um, is a prominent scholar and he, he is a pioneer in this regard, especially like Muhammad Abdu. Uh, Muhammad Abdu, he, he uh, is earlier than, than Jesus, but then uh, Nursi. But Nursi had a, a remarkable sermon um, in 1911, uh, he gave a sermon uh, at the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus at the presence of more than 10,000 people. In this uh, sermon, he speaks of the future cooperation between Christians and Muslims. And he interprets uh, the descent of Jesus with that regard. He says, Dialogue between Muslims and Christians uh, to bring justice and peace to our world. That will be the fulfillment of the coming of Jesus, the uh, descent of Jesus. Um, Muslims and Christians, in the understanding of, of Nursi, Muslims and Christians who have dedicated themselves to justice and spiritual life will fulfill the meaning of the coming of Jesus. That is to bring justice and peace to our world. That will be the fulfillment 
of the message. Um, a renewal of Christianity, he, he speaks of, you know, the, the, again, interpretive aspect of the descent of Jesus. He says, a renewal of Christianity and a return to the original message of Jesus that will be uh, a part of the descent of Jesus. That's his understanding. Now, is this message of, of Nursi compatible with the teaching of the Quran? Uh, I would say it is. It is compatible with the teaching of the Quran uh, to um, promote Muslim-Christian dialogue, Muslim-Christian cooperation. Um, because the Quran says, as we see in this verse, um, say, uh, Muhammad, O people of the book. Now, the people, the word, the statement, or the phrase uh, of the people of the book is used for Christians and Jews. In the Quranic language, they are the people of the book. The Quran invites Christians and Jews to come to a common word, common ground. And this invitation um, has been uh, going on for 1,400 years. It started in the beginning of Islam. The Prophet himself invited Christians and Jews to a common ground common word, um, that all of us worship none but God. And then this is an encompassing uh, common ground. Then you can speak of the problems of your community, uh, social problems, and how by coming together we, we solve these problems. And that's why I argue that um, um, just if the family of Abraham, what we call it the family of Abraham, Christians, Jews, and Muslims come together, they constitute more than half of humanity. More than half of, of humanity. The entire population of Earth. And therefore, they can make a big change. And therefore, they can bring peace. And I think that's why they have to come together. Uh, now, there are pioneers of this. There are scholars who are working on this. And I would give um, this uh, again a verse which is indicating that uh, diversity is a divine plan again it is a chronic understanding to be different not necessarily all people to be on the same way uh, it's a divine plan if God willed he could have made you one community but God made you different so that you benefit from each other and the Quran says uh, why with one another for good deeds? Why compete with one another for good deeds? This is a positive competition, the Quranic, the Quranic competition. is a positive competition. Um, there is no loser of this competition. You help the other to win, and you are winning, basically, to do good things. Uh, and that's why some Islamic scholars who are um, actively involved in this, um, I would say Fethullah Gulen is one of the most important scholars of Islam who is um, promoting dialogue with the people of the book, with the adherents of other religious traditions as well. He's meeting with um, John Paul II uh, in 1998 was an, uh, I think, uh, a groundbreaking, important event uh, uh, that um, promoted dialogue between Christians and Muslims. Uh, he has a very beautiful statement, and I have also uh, an appendix um, from him in the book. If you have time, I would recommend that you read that appendix. He says, close the doors of greed, abhorrence, and hatred. They may be a small seed, but by opening the door, they could grow and become a huge tree of evil. So, hatred, um, greed, abhorrence, these doors should be closed so that they will not grow and therefore instead will have love and mercy growing. 
These are some pictures on uh, Fethullah Gulen with Pope John Paul II um, in the, uh, with Patrick Bartholomew, the head of the, the Eastern Orthodox Christianity. And again, uh, he had a meeting with uh, Israel's Sephardic chief rabbi, Eliyahu Bakshi Doron, to promote a Muslim-Jewish dialogue. Uh, of course, there are many other Muslims who are involved in dialogue. Um, in this picture, if you realize, um, Dr. Sayyid Sayyid, who is one of the, uh, the champions of dialogue, I would say, between uh, Muslims and adherents of other religious traditions, the people of the book and other religious traditions. This event particularly, uh, I was part of this event uh, it was the second annual um, Muslim Baptist dialogue. And they were talking about when they had the, uh, the first meeting, they, they were thinking that this would be the first and the last meeting. They would not expect that Muslim Baptist dialogue would develop, would, um, would grow, but actually uh, they were proven wrong, um, it, it grew, and I think now they are planning for the third Muslim Baptist dialogue. Uh, here also we have, uh, uh, in, in a larger scale, uh, um, uh, Buddhists, Hindus, uh, uh, Muslims, Jews, Christians, uh, again, participating in an event, uh, dialogue event. Uh, in this picture you see, um, Pope Benedict XVI visiting uh, Blue Mosque in Istanbul with the Mufti of Istanbul, and he prayed in the in the mosque. Uh, you know, like Islamic prayers, contemplation, uh, having um, contemplation, etc. And then final thoughts. Um, I have uh, a, a quote from. From my book, I like to read for you, and that is the um, it's in fact summarize the, the this quote summarizes uh, what I wanted to say. Um, the current trend of interfaith solidarity is a great step toward a peaceful future for humanity. It can be argued that when the prophet said that Jesus will come as a just ruler, he emphasized the importance of justice and peace on earth. If the trend toward dialogue and cooperation leads justice, leads to justice and peace in our world, it will mean the fulfillment of the messages of both Muhammad and Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon them. Thank you very much. Thank you.